for this discussion, we are going to talk about matter. And it's defined as anything that has mass and occupies space. Examples are cell phones, trees, mask, you, us. Anything that surrounds us is a matter. Part of this discussion are states of matter, properties of matter, phases of matter, and classification of matter. Let's talk first about states of matter or the behavior of an atom. Matter normally occupies one of three phases or states. These are solid, liquid, and gas. The first state of matter is solid. It has a definite shape and volume. The particles of a solid cannot exchange positions. And solids are incompressible. Now observe the behavior of an atoms. They are too close from, from each other. Example, um, crystal. The second one is liquid. It has a definite volume. Liquids do not have a fixed shape because it will only depend on the container. If the container is cylinder, then therefore the shape is cylinder. Or if the container is cube, therefore the shape is cube. Like solids, liquids are also incompressible. And this time, the behavior of an atom is not that is that too close from each other? Example, water or any fluid. Next is gas. Gases take on the shape and volume of their container. Unlike solids and liquids, gases are highly compressible, just like balloon, ball. We can compress this kind of um, object. So this time, the behavior of an atom is not is too far from each other and we have two additional states of matter plasma and Bose Einstein condensate these two were discovered because the behavior of their atoms can be associated to any of the three common states of matter solid liquid and gas and these things rarely exist on earth Next is properties of matter. All matter can be described through their physical and chemical properties. Physical properties are usually observed by the senses. It could be in general or specific. General, it exists in all materials, specific for some materials only. When we say chemical properties, these are usually hidden and can be observed when a substance undergoes a chemical reaction. We have here an overview about properties of matter. We could describe matter through its physical property in general or in specific and through their chemical property. Under physical property, we have extensive and oops intensive property physical property a trait of matter that can be observed or measured without changing the chemical composition of the matter and no no chemical reactions allowed describing matter in general could be through their inertia the, the resistance of an object in motion mass the amount of matter in an object, weight, a measure of the pull of gravity on an object, volume, the amount of space an object takes up, and the density, the mass per unit of volume. For specific properties, we have hardness, the ability to oppose a change in shape, and the ability to scratch another substance. Brittleness, the ability to crumble when subjected to blow. Luster, the ability of a substance to shine. Malleability, 
the ability to be hammered into sheets or madiform, let's say tansan, hammered or dukduk na flatten siya. Ductility, the ability to be drawn into fine wires. Also, we have elasticity, its ability to be stretched but can be formed again to its original form. Example, rubber band. Porosity, the ability to absorb liquid. Flexibility, its ability to bend without breaking. And lastly, solubility, the ability of matter to dissolve another material. And types of properties, types of physical properties, we can also describe an object through its extensive properties. It, um, it, it depends on the amount of an object, example, mass, length, volume, shape. So if we are asked to describe the extensive property of our self, that would be our height, our um, weight, and our vital statistics so that's measurable extensive is more on measurable sample for band paper a4 that's extensive property long short intensive properties on the other hand do not depend on the amount of matter it's the total opposite to the extensive property these properties are color taste melting point density, luster, hardness. Example, one piece of paper and one box of paper. Regardless of their quantity, still the color is white. Mm, one slice of cake and the whole cake itself, regardless of their um, size, still the taste is the same. Now, chemical property, a property of matter that describes a substance based on its ability to change into a new substance with different properties. We have biodegradability, the ability of a substance to get decomposed. Reactivity, it's the ability of matter to combine chemically with other substances. Flammability, it's the ability of matter to burn. When matter burns, it combines with oxygen and changes to different substances. Lastly, corrosion, it's the deterioration of a metal. Physical and chemical changes, the two types of changes that matter undergoes. Matter is always changing from size, shape, color, form. Physical changes is a change of matter without changing the identity of the substance. It is simply a change in state, a change in size, shape, mass. It does not change the chemical makeup of the matter. You have what you started with just in a different form. These are the words used to describe physical changes. Grind, dissolve, erode, rip, tear, break, phase change, Example of phase changes, melt, freeze, condense. Examples under physical changes, paper torn into pieces. Sugar dissolved into tea, salt dissolved into water, nails or haircut. Though there's changes in their form or in their size, but the chemical composition is the same. Types of phase changes, melting, freezing, vaporization, condensation, sublimation, deposition. All, all phase changes are caused by adding or taking away energy. Again, changing the state, changing states does not change the chemical makeup of the matter. You have what you started with just in a different form. Here is an example, phase changes of H2O, ice, to water, to water vapor. Still, the composition is hydrogen, two hydrogen, and one oxygen. With the presence of heat from solid, it becomes water 
or liquid and from water it evaporates and become gas. So here's an illustration, counterclockwise, deposition, melting, evaporation. Clockwise, clockwise rotation, we have condensation, uh, solidification, and sublimation. Chemical changes. It occurs when two or more substances are combined into entirely new substance with all new properties. Cannot, cannot change it back. The damage has been done. And these are the chemical change verbs. Chemical change verbs. Rusting, rotting, curdling, burning, cooking, light sensitivity, digesting, and tarnishing. So here's an example. Another clue for us to identify that the example is under chemical change is there is a change in smell and color. Now we are down to our last topic under matter and it's all about classification of matter or simply the characteristics of a matter. We have here a concept map concept map or overview matter can be classified into mixtures and pure substance we have two types of mixtures homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures also for pure substance we have two types compound and element let's differentiate a pure substance from a mixture a pure substance is a form of matter that has a definite composition and distinct properties. Examples are gold, salt, iron, pure water, sugar, while a mixture is a combination of two or more substances in which each substance retains its own distinct identity. Examples, salt and water, salt water, oil and vinegar dressing, granite, air. Now, let's understand the two types of mixtures, homogeneous and heterogeneous. The composition of heterogeneous mixture is not uniform throughout. You can visibly see the different components. Best example is halo-halo or ding-dong. On the illustration, we can still see different uh, substances. Now, for homogeneous, the composition of the mixture is the same throughout or they have uniform composition and it is also called as solution. Solution are made up of two components, the solute which is dissolved in solvents. Solute is mahile, solvent ang mohiles. If the solvent is water, the solution is called an aqueous solution which is symbolized as AQ. Still under homogeneous, we often think of a solution as being a solid dissolved in a liquid. However, in a solution, both the solvent and the solute can be in any phase or state of matter, solid, liquid, or gas. So here's an example, solute again ang mahiles, solvent ang mohiles. Sol solid and liquid, we have salt dissolved in water. Salt is a solute and water is a solvent. We have gas to gas, also solid to solid. Let's unlock these following terms, soluble, insoluble, miscible, and immiscible. If a substance dissolves in another substance, we say the first substance is soluble. And the second, if they do not dissolve, they are said to be insoluble. Example for soluble, carbon dioxide is soluble in air. And we have on the illustration, sugar and salt are both soluble in water. Example for insoluble, gold is insoluble in water. On the illustration also, sand is insoluble in water.
In the case of liquids, we use miscible and immiscible. Miscible if two liquids completely dissolved in each other. If they do not, then they are immiscible. Example for miscible, alcohol and water are miscible. And on the illustration, if we combine these substances, they are miscible. Example for immiscible, gasoline and water are immiscible, dili ma mixed. And on the illustration, we have oil and water, dili good good sila ma mixed. We are almost done. Pure substance can be element and compound. Element, it is substance that cannot be separated into simpler substances by chemical means. Dili siya pwede ma-separate. Examples are carbon, sulfur, mercury, copper, iron, or any elements in the periodic table. Compound, on the other hand, it is a substance composed of atoms of two or more different elements. Two or more different elements chemically banded in fixed proportion. As such, they can be separated or chemically decompose into their component elements. So we have here examples of compound, water, um, table salt, sucrose. So this water can be separated. We have these methods of separating mixtures or compounds. And that would be our lesson next week probably. That ends our lesson.